address climate change. Ethiopia finds itself in the midst of a vigorous attempt by the international community to intervene in its internal affairs. It is a conspiracy of lies and disinformation against Ethiopia that is secretly hashed and coordinated between top Western diplomats, all of whom are aided by the TPLF. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed assumed power in April 2018 to spearhead the reform that the Ethiopian people demanded. However, the TPLF, which was the kingmaker in the former EPRDF, retreated from this process of reform, most of its leadership fleeing to Tigray. Since then, the TPLF has been aggressively trying to undermine the Ethiopian state and government. In September last year, the TPLF single-handedly declared a regional election, violating the constitution, which gives mandate only to the National Electoral Board. Worse still, the TPLF backstabbed an Ethiopian army camp based in Magala in November, committing an act of treason. The Ethiopian government retaliated by waging a campaign of law enforcement. Although the TPLF underestimated the federal government's strength at the outset, it faced a humiliating defeat. <laughs> that explains why it resorted to mass killings such as the one in Maikadra against innocent ethnic Amara. When the TPLF mafia clique realized that its hope of ousting the Abiy-led government from power and ruling Ethiopia once again was dashed forever, it pinned hopes on Western powers. The international community has blown the rehabilitation and humanitarian assistance in Tigray out of proportions, alleging that access has not been given to the international agencies. Well, what we know is that there is still no humanitarian access to the region. So far, the Ethiopian government has granted unfettered authorization for international aid organizations. Uh, Ethiopia has been maintaining uh, operations aimed at uh, um, making sure that law is observed in the northern part of the country. That was purely an internal affairs, and an internal matter of Ethiopia. Uh, however, there are concerns that are being sprung from different corners about it. Particularly now, the um, maintaining law and order has been effectively undertaken. And now it's time for uh, reconstructions, rehabilitations, and confidence building in that part of Ethiopia. Uh, friends are coming out to help and uh, there are others also who are, who are expressing their concerns and who are asking for the opening up. And now to get the support of the international community, Tigray is open. Anyone can travel there only by notifying Ministry of Peace and uh, media, international media has been allowed to be there without any authorizations, only through notifications. The US, EU and the Western media have been busy manufacturing and sensationalizing a humanitarian disaster in Ethiopia's Tigray state and pinning it on the Ethiopian government. This is despite the fact that the humanitarian disaster was caused and compounded by the TPLF's attack on the federal military base. This week, the US accused them of ethnic cleansing for the first time and demanded an end to the abuses. These bodies have been pushing with a bogus narrative of massive human rights violations. The US, UK, Ireland, Estonia and other Western states allied at the UN Security Council, pressuring for sanctions against Ethiopia. This is in violation of Ethiopia's sovereignty. We have internal issues and we understand that we might need some international support. But we also know that we have been free since we have established as a country so that we will never allow any, whether they are international or any other organized groups, to intervene and challenge the sovereignty of Ethiopia in any case. The UN Security Council's uh, attempt to hold uh, a discussion and then follow by a resolution to issue a resolution on Ethiopia has failed. 
not only on the United States, on the UN Security Council's uh, uh, highest level, but on technical committee level as well. Uh, in the details of the, that process, we have learned that uh, China, Russia, and India asked, asked for uh, rewording of the statement uh, regarding what's going on uh, in northern Ethiopia, uh, where the Western powers disagreed uh, on a statement, on a wordings, which indicates that each actor involved in the in the conflict should be held accountable and responsible. They refused to include such a statement. This indicates they are biased from the beginning. Now, uh, is it new for the Western uh, powers, such as the United States and uh, uh, European powers led by France, UK, and the, in this particular case, um, Norway, uh, if I got that correct, I think it's Norway spearheading the UN push. Um, is it new that they, are, they have tried to uh, intervene on Ethiopian internal affairs and uh, to twist Ethiopia's arms to make it succumb to their interests? It is not new. It has happened before, so uh, we shouldn't be surprised. Ethiopians then came out chanting slogans against these bodies. The Ethiopian diaspora spoke in unison against Western conspiracy to restore the TPLF to power. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas-Greenfield both made comments condemning the ongoing conflict in the northernmost region of the country. The U.S. has also called for an independent investigation into what it called alleged war crimes. Thousands of protesters mobilized by Ethiopian and Eritrean diaspora groups marched in Washington and several Canadian cities condemning suggestions by U.S. officials that the Ethiopian government carried out atrocities in the Tigray state. Demonstration happened in, in Washington, D.C. Today it's going to happen in New York. There was one in Canada yesterday. Uh, uh, several uh, European countries had theirs uh, day before yesterday. Uh, so the demonstration uh, is all over the world. And there has been a lot of negative media um, that has been um, uh, perceiving that um, Ethiopia is attacking its own citizens, which is not the case. Um, and we want to get the, more, the, the, the message out um, that we need partnership and cooperation uh, to work together uh, to ensure human rights, uh, to support those who are in need, those who are victimized. The U.S. and EU, according to the protesters, are weaponizing the misery and suffering of the people of Tigray for their own political ends. What we see from the European Union, mainly, is inconsistency when it comes to what is ha what's happening in northern Ethiopia and overall in Ethiopia. It is inconsistent because they have not said anything over the past 27 plus years where human rights violations, gross human rights violations have been happening almost on a daily basis, almost on a daily basis in Ethiopia. Uh, this is uh, not limited to Ethiopia. The previous regime had uh, an extended arm that uh, turned Somalia, South Sudan, into a chaotic uh, war scene. They were in instrumental, the previous regime, and the entire uh, government structure, particularly its security apparatus, were in instrumental in creating havoc in neighboring countries, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan to a certain extent, and Somalia included. So they were weapons for the Western powers. So they didn't say anything. Had they been concerned for human rights violations, they could have spoken about human rights uh, issues elsewhere in Ethiopia. What they are trying to do in Northern Ethiopia is they are trying uh, to save their uh, partners in crime, in regional crimes. So. It is a double standard, 
it's not about human rights. It's not about uh, uh, access to uh, relief. It's not about that. It's about just forcing the Ethiopian government to accepting their terms, and at the same time trying to uh, to save this criminal clique, this criminal clique that has been uh, uh, helping them do their dirty, dirty job uh, across the region. The US and EU are only advancing their political objectives and in the process unloading their white man's burden to save the half-child, half-savage starving Africans. The war was started by TPLF, despite our parents, our grandparents going to the region of Tigray, begging on their knees, TPLF leaders to come to the table peacefully and negotiate peacefully like the rest of the 84 ethnic cities that exist in Ethiopia. Yet, they went overnight, in which they confirmed in their interview that they attacked our national defense force in their sleep and murder young men and women and abusive, abusive. They drove over them or with their trucks. They committed heinous, heinous crimes that the world should loudly rebuke. Yet we have UN and US government trying to instigate and start a war on Ethiopia. We rebuke that. We want Biden administration to denounce a terrorist organization. By the way, they have registered on their database. They are still registered in the national database as terrorists. So why is it taking this long for the international community to denounce a terrorist group. We are done. The people of Ethiopia are done with this terrorist group. We've had them for 27 years. We pushed them. No one helped us but the people, the young old man who died for it, so that we are able to uh, reform our country. The allegations of human rights abuses and ethnic cleansing, the Ethiopian government said, is an outright accusation first made by U.S. Secretary of State Anthony J. Blinken during his testimony to the House of Foreign Affairs Committee on 10th of March 2021. A force that will not uh, abuse the human rights of uh, the people of Tigray or commit acts of ethnic cleansing, which we've seen in western Tigray. The government pointed out that this is a completely unfounded and spurious verdict. The attack, uh, the massacres they have been claiming in uh, Assum, uh, there are a lot of evidences now coming up uh, that uh, they, brought, they brought pictures from uh, Nigeria and uh, other countries, uh, which, are, which has never been happened in, in, in Assum, in Ethiopia, in Assum. And also, uh, uh, there, is, there are uh, in, information now coming out from uh, Aksum itself, uh, where we have seen uh, a priest uh, together with uh, the entire uh, uh, people uh, around the church, uh, uh, informing uh, the audiences that there has never been such attack, there has never been such massacre. Uh, they have been uh, there. Uh, so. Uh, all the false allegations and uh, claims by the TPLF and their cronies uh, uh, inside and outside is uh, being disproved on a daily basis. What we need to do is continuing uh, disseminating the correct information all over the world, wherever we are, uh, to the international community and also uh, uh, campaigning against their disinformation and the misinformation. The Western media have been warned against astonishing the image of the Ethiopian government being bribed by TPLF diaspora agents. The editorials of these media are so transparently biased and willfully ignorant that they are blatantly spreading malicious propaganda. Ethiopians said there is a need to expose their lies, fake and disinformation on Ethiopia to a candid world. The Ethiopian government is not the reason for what happened uh, in Ethiopia at the moment. It is the Tigray People's Liberation Front that created this problem. They did start the war. They thought they were going to win, but they lost in the battlefield. Now, what do they do? They, ha they ha have made the whole world with the media, with the cyber warfare.
The international community has deliberately ignored the mass killings at Maikadra, whereas its cronies have been busy talking about alleged killings and war crimes at Aksum.